everyone. I'm Liz Brown Swanson, and welcome to RPV City Talk on the Road. I am with Rancho Palos Verdes Mayor Eric Alegria. Happy summer. It's official. It's June 21st here, and we are coming from the beautiful Oceanfront Terranea Resort. Very exciting to be here. June marks Terranea's anniversary, so we thought perfect time to come. And also the official reopening of this resort and our state, our city, way to go as we uh, watch the pandemic come behind us slowly. Um, or not fast enough, I should say, but good news. Um, and so we're gonna talk about all things in the city with you as you give us sort of your mid-year uh, I think we're going to call it a mid-year mayor's um, state of the city. And we're going to have a state of Terranea report with the president of Terranea, Terry Hack. She'll join us later on the show, so stay tuned. She's going to tell us all things Terranea. And um, with that, you know, Terranea is so important to our city. We're going to talk about that first. Brings in millions of dollars to our community in the transient occupancy tax. So we're going to start off right there, uh, Mr. Mayor, with just talking about Terranea and the role we ha this resort plays. Oh, thank you so much, Liz. And thank <laughs> you for taking our PVTV on the road. I've so enjoyed our last several shows. And, and Terranea is obviously such an important community asset to us. So it's just critical for us to be here. And the timing, as you noted, yes. is particularly uh, important to the whole community, but uh, particularly Terranea. So Terranea absolutely has been an important community asset to our city since its opening in 2009. Uh, of course it provides lots of benefits to our community, not just the patrons of, of uh, Terranea and the resort itself, but uh, those in our community who have enjoyed its trails and overlooks and all of the things that come along with it as well. It's just beautiful to look at. As we said 12 years ago in 2009, nearly 50 million dollars in this T transient occupancy tax coming into the city revenues and um, that money helps to uh, fund public works projects yes and, and absolutely capital improvement projects yes it goes uh, it, long ago the the wisdom of our prior city councils uh, said you know what let's set aside all of our transient occupancy tax and dedicate it towards our capital improvement projects and that's what it's done for all these years so for those of you who enjoyed our nice roads and uh, nice public facilities and all of the different infrastructure a lot of that has been contributed by way of the transient occupancy tax from Terranea and as you noted 50 million dollars over that about 12 year span right so and very significant and the 25 million dollar reserve that we have now even during the pandemic, it was, you know, we saw a shortfall coming from here as the resort was closed for months. But still, you know, each year I was looking at the numbers since opening. I think the biggest year was um, in just a few years ago where it was almost six million Correct. in TOT and it was down to a a little over two, I think, during the pandemic. Um, but for somebody watching and they say, what is TOT? Will you just explain that? Sure. So the, uh, this is a this is basically a tax that's applied to anyone who comes visit. I, th those of you who travel have certainly seen, if you look closely enough at yes. your bill, you'll notice uh, when you travel uh, elsewhere that, that there's usually a occupancy tax that you're charged. So the same is true here. So any uh, occupant or patron of, of Terranea Resort who comes to visit uh, when they take on their cost of their room rental, they will also see that occupancy tax applied to it as well. Okay. Well, we're talking dollars. I want to say congratulations to the city council, the staff. You've passed the 21-22 budget. Um, of course, Terry is a big player in that budget. So we're going to have you just give us sort of um, an overview of what the city council was able to pass and how we are fiscally strong still despite the pandemic. Uh, yes, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, we, we are just so fortunate, Liz. Uh, we did pass, as you noted, uh, final adoption of our budget. The fiscal cycle for most municipalities runs July 1 through Ju June 30th, so it's on a different than the calendar cycle, and we just approved ours. So we are charged up and energized to go into the, the new fiscal year. We did uh, approve a budget. Our expenditures are about $27.4 million, with the revenues exceeding that. Uh, what I particularly enjoyed about this year's budget cycle is staff uh, actually in the past has done a five-year model. We had requested a 10-year model, just given the sensitivity of the environment, and uh, to look at just the long term of operating costs of the city and how that relates to um, you know, expected revenue stream. And we have a balanced budget uh, that we're expecting and projecting over the next 10 years. Um, and additionally, they did a sensitivity analysis to kind of evaluate what the impact of the consumer price index would be if it goes up and what that would look like. And uh, I, by all accounts, um, services continue. Uh, we 
had some vacant positions staffed this last year, just given you know a reduction in the amount of um, services that we needed to provide during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're looking to fill those. So the city is in a great position and great financial health and is gearing up for a really successful year. That's exciting. You mentioned the city has employment opportunities. Terranea is also recruiting to get people here at the resort now that they're getting busier. And I know that you could just go on the city's website to find out about careers, et cetera, because uh, um, it's great. There's, it's, it's exciting that there's a lot of openings right now. So apply, apply. to our city and here. <laughs> we'll take a. Um, so uh, moving on, I know that another big, big uh, step for the city council was had to do with goals, and you were able to approve the 21-22 goals. Um, in fact, you have 56 goals that were approved for the next year, and you reduced them from 87. And I, I know you did a lot of work to tweak the process. So just explain how the goal setting process takes place and what this all means. Sure. Each year uh, over the last three years, the the councils uh, have had a a process in February leading up to the budget where we meet and say, what do we want to accomplish this next year, Uh, especially as it pertains to activities sort of outside, I would say, the norm. Uh, in terms of um, operating activities for the city. And and we have a a structure that we adopted a couple years ago that we still have related to our goals. And if I may, I'll just mention the, uh, at least the the six general goal statements, I'll call them, or categories, uh, just for for the public's benefit. Public safety, our goal is to maintain a high level of public safety with public engagement. We've done a great job of that, of course, being ranked the fourth safest city in California. Um, Infrastructure, we want to maintain and improve all public infrastructure. This includes transportation systems, parking, utilities, storm drains, and sewers. Uh, And city land and facilities is the next category. Maintain and improve all city-owned properties. Uh, We were in the process of doing that. Quality of life, and we want to continue to improve quality of life for our residents. And then finally, the last two categories, citizen involvement and public outreach. Uh, we want to engage our residents in in our city activities and decision making and government efficiency transparency and accountability so that's that's a mouthful but um, all of these goal categories um, sort of is the framework by which we've uh, aligned those 56 goals as you mentioned it's a lot of goals uh that's why we went through some level of consolidation this last year and there's lots of things in there so right and i think it's great how you've changed it to a quarterly reporting process so that you can take take a look at the status of goals in this sort of color-coded chart that makes it really easy for residents to sort of follow and really see where are we you know you get it's green if you're good to go right and i'm so proud of that i'm so proud of that chart it's fabulous and i like to to mention anyone who's willing to listen that uh, most cities <laughs> don't have a doc- document like that that you simply can go on. If you go on our city website under the city council, I think it's the second or third document there. We have our goals and uh, it's periodically updated as you noted, Liz. So people can see where we're falling short and where we're exceeding expectations as it relates to our established goals. Right. And also making sure that they're funded, right? That is a big piece. And as you look at the 56 goals for the next year, there's priority. There's ones I'm looking down here like that are your high priority goals. I don't know if you want to reference any of those or we've sort of covered the six general topics, but I mean, it gets then subdivided. So um, we can continue on as we, we have some other areas to address. If you want anything else you want to I'll, highlight regarding I'll goals. I'll mention a few things just, just so people have an understanding of what kinds of things fall within the yeah. 56. Although, as we said, you certainly encourage people to go reference them directly. But, you know, for instance, under public safety, we uh, want to have a goal of establishing more technology investments for uh, to our residents to benefit related to reducing crime rates. A wildfire mitigation continues to be a big focus right. for us. Uh, port- then, of course, there's some of our bigger capital projects like Portuguese Bend Landslide Remediation. Uh, we've talked a lot about Ladera Linda Community Center, the Civic Center Master Plan, the Trails Network Plan. That's one we haven't talked as much about, but is, is in dire need of a, mm-hmm. of a integration and an update. So, uh, And then finally, I'll just acknowledge uh, Western Avenue Redevelopment. So it's been on our goals for a couple of years. We have a vision of beautifying, improving traffic, and, and improving the experience of our residents who come through that that corridor on the western side of the of the hill. All right, so we're going to move on. As usual, we always cover agenda items that went before the council um, in the month of June at the June 15th meeting. Exciting uh, news for seniors. The council passed a pilot program that will help enhance services to our senior community. So how about talking a little bit about that and explain this pilot program 
Uh, happy to do it, Liz. Our, our council is quite excited to, to roll this out. It's Aging and Disability Resource Connection, or ADRC. Mm -hmm. And there's really three primary components to this program. The support system program, which is uh, where volunteers can check in on eligible seniors over 65 with a disability. There's the handy worker program uh, component of it, which is related to minor household repairs. So these, uh, these residents can benefit from this part of the program as well. And finally, the cyber squad program, where, you, where those uh, residents can benefit from receiving basic technical support. Uh, I know personally I would benefit from that if I were eligible. So this is just an excellent way for us to provide that little extra uh, service to our, our seniors in the community who have disabilities. And of course, it's also for seniors that want to stay at home and age at home in place, these are the kinds of things that people end up leaving their house because they, they need help and assistance. But this is great. And is, is it a free service to Free service to our residents. And if you go on the website, rpvca.gov slash ADRC, you can get more information. Okay. I'd like to give the community information on the um, public safety town hall meeting that took place since the last time you and I were together. You moderated the event. Of course, the Lameda Sheriff Station captain was there, some of the deputies, all to address public safety. And I found it interesting. I watched from home. It was, you know, a hybrid meeting that it seemed like people were more focused on what was happening with coyotes. Um, somebody said, you know, we're the fourth safest city in Rancho Palos Verdes in, in the state. We're not worrying about our people being safe. We're worrying about our pets and feeling safe with the coyote situation. So can you address that? Like what the city's doing? We have a coyote management plan. Yes. For people that are concerned, we're not doing enough. Absolutely. It has become an issue that's arisen more as of late. And as you noted during the public safety forum, we focused uh, a good portion of our, our time in just talking about that. So we, as you mentioned, we do have a coyote management pro, uh, plan. And if you look on our website, you can receive information on that. Uh, but ultimately, we decided it's time to reevaluate that plan, which we do periodically. And so uh, tentatively, our July 20th agenda is going to be an opportunity on our city council agenda for our residents to come out and let's to talk through uh, that coyote management plan and, and sort of assess where we're at as it relates to making sure uh, those aggressive coyotes are, are uh, addressed and that we're living in cohabitation with coyotes successfully. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know I feel like we're all seeing this example of before you know coyotes would come out at night now we're seeing in the middle of the day, they don't seem to be affected by if you're walking by. And so that's great that you're on top of it. And I know the city's proactively looking into this. So um, we'll stay tuned for that July meeting and hopefully you'll come up with more solutions. Um, but on the subject of animals, we're going to move on to peafowl. Um, again, the city council decided um, to reinstate the um, peafowl trapping program that we've had in the city. Um, and, uh, you know, there's there, it can be controversial. There's those that love the peacocks and those probably you still love the peacocks but don't like the sounds and the noise and the distraction so just explain what's going on with the latest with the peafowl count the census and what we're doing to manage the population yes uh, so as you noted uh, and on an annual basis uh, city staff does a, a census of peafowl mm -hmm. and the population on the hill last year was the first year in quite some time where the council agreed just given that the, it was a lower population that we weren't going to do the trapping uh, but this year we did reinstitute the trapping with a nuance, which was that we were going to focus on two particular areas, uh, Vista Grande and Sunnyside Ridge neighborhoods, because we did notice uh, in both cases a significant increase in the peafowl population in those areas. And as you, as you said, it's, it's a balancing act. It's a fine line between uh, ensuring that we can enjoy these majestic creatures, but also maintain quality of life uh, for those who are affected uh, negatively by their presence and the trapping is important and it's important for people to understand that the trapping is is very uh, done very positively it's humane, it's humane and uh, the peafowl are relocated to areas much more open okay so f as far as the peafowl program goes do you know how much this costs our city to implement this so we the city does budget fifteen thousand uh, dollars in its budget to, to deal with the, the trapping okay well, thank you for the update on that. And now we're going to move on to our fun topic of discussion at this time of year, 4th of July. 4th of 
It is back, um, and uh, I want you to give all the details. We're excited. Oh, we are so excited. This is our first sort of milestone event for our city as we we go through the reopening. So we will have our full 4th of July event as we've had in past years from 1976 all the way up until last year, which was the first year we didn't get a chance to have it due to the pandemic. But we're expecting to have another family-friendly set of um, activities and, and entertainment for people to enjoy. Things from watermelon roll, the trucks, uh, the you know, multiple food trucks, live music, petting zoo, pony rides, games, crafts. So it's really for all ages, Liz. As and you 11 to 4 p.m. 11 to 4 p.m. At Pacific Center. And I hear a rumor that two of my colleagues are going to have a rematch uh, on their pie eating contest this year. So I'm, I'm rooting for both of them to do well on that. Uh, but uh, we're quite excited. And then uh, from that point on, uh, really every other week for the next several weeks, we're going to have other activities up at the Civic Center as well. It is so nice to see everything reopening, our city being so busy and so much fun to be had. Um, as you were mentioning in our city, just over um, just recent weekend of uh, June 19th weekend, in one day, you know, I started off, I joined the RPV Beach Cleanup. It was the first volunteer effort at the RPV Beach. Thank you to the volunteers. Movies in the park back. Um, I went to the, I saw Onward, the Disney movie. I happen to have a great day um, enjoying city events, and uh, which was at Hess Park. And then also that same day was the PV Street Fair, and our city had a booth educating the community and all the great things the city's doing. Any particular events you're looking forward to besides oh. the 4th of July and movies oh. in the park with uh, your kids? I love that. And <laughs> I'll highlight uh, personally concerts in the park, which is something I've yes. pushed for and been very passionate for in our councils very much behind. And so it was scheduled last year. And of course, we had to cancel, unfortunately. But we really do realize uh, that having music, live music out, outdoors is just a neat way to get our community and our residents to come together and enjoy each other. And so we do have a couple of those events coming up, July 28th and August 31st from 4 to 6 Excellent. p.m. So look look that up on our website as well. And, and I have to come give out. You know, big applause to our Recreation Parks Department for the city that actually organizes and puts on these events. And with that, we're going to take a quick break and just give you some highlights of the fun events taking place in our city. Hi everybody, my name is Jesse Valpondo. I'm the City of Rancho Palos Verdes' Emergency Services Coordinator and today we're promoting emergency preparedness and public safety information at the um, Peninsula Chamber of Commerce Marketplace. It is great that the city takes the time and effort to participate in this marketplace this year. Emergency preparedness and city awareness are both necessary topics and I'm happy to see them out here today. I know you're on our city's Emergency Preparedness Committee. Um, what would you be pitching at this point? You know, it is the heat of the summer, it's busy time. What, what's the number one thing you would tell residents right now? People really need to prepare for the fires that are coming. It is high fire season, brush clearance around your house, vegetation clearance around your house, and put together that all essential go bag, which is basically just a backpack with supplies you, you and your family need when you have to leave in a moment's notice. Um, today, um, we're handing out a file of life. And what this is, is where you can actually write down your emergency contact information, post this on your refrigerator, and during an emergency, um, our law enforcement and fire department personnel will be able to uh, be able to locate the important information that they need to um, in order to help you out. Hi, I'm Mary Hirsch and I work for the Recreation and Parks Department with the City of Rancho Palos Verdes. Behind me are volunteers signing up for our first volunteer event since 2019, so we're excited. And the Rangers have requested that we start at RPV Beach. They said they've seen some trash down there they, they'd like to clean up. And uh, we're having a fun event today. We have over 40. We were hoping we would get 25, so we're well, well on our way to getting more. There's lots of groups of students. The parents have called and said, these students need these hours and want these hours. So I think everybody's just excited to get outside. We want to help the beach. We want to help the environment and all of that. What are you picking up so far? Oh, just like random trash that's from the ground, like paper and all that stuff. Clothes, pl bottle caps, and plastic bags, all of that. So how did you hear about this and what brought you to be part of the cleanup today? I saw something on uh, MSN and I decided to go ahead and volunteer. I know there's a lot of trash in the beach. You get to see all these videos of turtles getting wrapped in fish nets. It's just so sad to see the wildlife suffer. And all it takes is just a few people to come out and grab a bag every once in a while and it helps save so many animals' lives. We have got 
some parts of fish traps. I've got some plastic. I've got some fishing wire, it looks like. Some balloons. I've only been here 10 minutes and I've found this much. I'm looking to help my son get more involved and teach him the act of giving back to our community, especially our local community. Um, we live in a wonderful place, beautiful. Um, should never take it for granted. Um, we have a beach. One of the best things we could do is help clean up. Every time we go, we see garbage. We found some, a lot of styrofoam and uh, I'm getting involved for some service hours and to help clean up the beaches. How often do you both come down here to enjoy this beach? We haven't been to this one before. We've gone hiking um, up on the cliffs, but never down to this particular beach. So this is exciting. Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Wellstead from the Parks and Recreation Department for the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. And I'm coming to you here at Hess Park for our first movie in the park. We're showing Onward. This is a free event. We have hundreds of people here from the community. We have Kristen DeLeo from Electric Kids doing some pre-movie gymnastics activities. We have giveaways, we have flyers, we have information about all of our other upcoming summer events including our other movies and our summer concert in the park series. I'm excited to watch the movie because um, I've been to a drive-in movie before but that's about it, like an outdoor movie. That's like the only outdoor movie I've been to. So this is like my second overall outdoor movie of 11 years of life. We came early, we set up our seats and uh, we got food. There's a food truck. There's some very good food. Uh, RPV, of course, is putting movies on the park on all summer. You're going to keep hitting them up? Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be as exciting as it was going to be. And I think I definitely want to come to more. We, we love movies in the park. Thanks, RPV. As you can see, everyone having so much fun at a city events, and I know you're going to be out and about with your family we as well, for sure. Um, but as we sit here right now at Terranea, bringing you our City Talk show, um, I had a chance to talk to the president, Terry Hack, um, who's going to give you just a little highlights of what's happening right here, along with her colleague, Gay Van Sands, both the president, Terry Hack, and Gay, our Ranch of Palos Verdes residents. Mm -hmm. So we're going to hear from them now about things happening at Terranea. Hello, I'm Terry Hack, and I'm president of Terranea Resort, and we are open for business. We're so excited to welcome everyone back, and it really is an exciting launch to our summer season. Each day, we see business returning as the restrictions in both California and L.A. County have list lifted. Then many of our guests have started to return. They're feeling more comfortable to travel again. And so the enthusiasm is really just boiling over. So for us, our challenge is to bring all of our staff members back. And we're very, very happy to report that we have recalled over 500 associates. So we're just under 70 associates now back serving our guests and we have some positions open so if any of our community members want to spend their time with us this summer and serve our guests we'd love to have them just go on to terranea.com slash careers and sign up and we'd love to have you part of our team so it's really exciting for us the guests really want to get out and enjoy this beautiful area and enjoy our services and spa and food I think we play a very important financial role in this beautiful community. We contribute to TOT tax, we contribute to golf tax, and we contribute to sales tax with all of our food and beverage revenues. So we're an important part of the city's budget, as I'm sure you've heard, and it's important for us to give back in such a meaningful way to our community. And TOT is generated on room nights, so it's important for us to have the overnight guest stay here at the resort. And of course, we are, um, a, I think, the highest um, number of employees here for a single business, maybe not a, the um, government businesses or hospitals. But yes, we do employ so many staff members in a very variety of um, different positions. So both from a very first job ever to someone who is entering the workforce again because they've retired from their main career and they just want to keep themselves busy. And then all in between, many ladies and gentlemen that are making their lifelong careers here at Terranea. Yes, 2020 was 
a very, very difficult year. We are optimistic about the future. We're looking forward. We're building our business each day. Many of our group groups are coming back. Um, you'll see several of them throughout the hotel today. As we get to the fall, large major groups are returning. Weddings are literally off of the chart. So many brides and grooms who have placed their lifelong plans of getting married on hold and now they're seeing their dreams come true. Next year is absolutely enthusiastic with business and we will rebuild and we will take our rightful place in continuing this legacy of Terranea. Hello and good afternoon and welcome to Terranea. Uh, we're inviting you in honor of our 12th anniversary this year to come and find 12 ways to celebrate with us. So starting off with rediscovering summer celebrations here. We had to cancel last summer, did we not? So here we go. We hope you'll come back and discover all of those traditional celebrations again with us on property this year. We have a lot of specials out there if you'd like to check online. Um, and the top one at the, mo at the moment is Stay More, Save More, offering all kinds of wonderful discounts for you to stay longer with us. So check that out on terranea.com. We invite you to come and share the grounds with us to rediscover nature, to come and learn more about our sustainability practices, all of the fun things that we're doing on property at the moment. Remember, we have 102 acres that we want to share with you. Visit the activity center at Point Discovery, where you can talk to our team and you can discover all of the fun activities that we offer, including kayaking and paddle boarding and archery and horseback riding. We're even doing ponies on property at holiday weekends. So come do pony rides with us. Um, we have new family offerings for you. We have a really amazing escape room. So come and book escape room with your family, bookable online. So we hope you'll consider that while you're staying with us. We have DIY to go activities still, things that we invented on the fly when COVID hit us and we have all kinds of fun boxes still to go, kids club, mandalas, painting, all kinds of things. So again, visit the store at Point Discovery and pick up a DIY box to go. We have developed a new self-guided nature walk. So in lieu of the walks that we used to do that were accompanied, you can now pick up a self-guided uh, brochure and using iNaturalist, go out and have a look and, and find fun things around property. I know many of you will be excited to hear this one. Sound series at Nelson's is coming back and starting the 4th of July weekend, concerts will begin again and will run every Saturday for the summer from 6 to 10 p.m. We now have picnic baskets to go. We've done a lot of food to go across the holiday periods in the last 18 months as we've been closed and picnic baskets have proven really popular. So pick up a picnic basket and don't go. Stay and enjoy it on property. We would love to see you here. And then get inspired with Terranea Life. If you haven't tried it already, go online and check out our really fun and inspiring videos about life here on the peninsula as well as at Terranea. And then last but not least, and possibly the most important at the moment, come join our team. We are recruiting. We would love for you to come and join us here at Terranea. So if you haven't already considered a new job for this new world that we're in, please come join Terranea. So I want to hear what one of your favorite memories is here at Terranea. Thanks, Liz. My, my favorite memory is bringing my two daughters, my nine-year-old and four-year-old daughter, on a date with dad, basically, to Catalina Kitchen here at Terranea. So they nice. dressed up in their nice little sundresses, and we had, got a chance to have lunch together, uh, and uh, it was quite an event. And I know many of our residents have memories just like that one. All right. This is the place where I think where the president likes to say of Terranea that here's the place where memories are made and looking forward to many more, like you said. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. Um, it's great bringing the mayor show with you from Terranea. Summer's here. We're a lot of exciting things in the city. Um, any final words from you? No, enjoy your summer, folks. Come out and enjoy all of our events. And Liz, thank you so much for <laughs> another great RPV TV. And we always say check out our city website, rpvc8.gov, to find out about everything RPV. We are RPV together. Happy summer, everyone. Thanks for watching.